<laughs> I just want to be famous. So what are we doing? You gonna I don't do a think YouTube this is the video? place to go if you want to be famous. Yeah, uh, maybe. Infamous. I may go so back. I think, let's just run it. So are you recording, Humanoid? Yes, I am. Are we going to do like a clap or something? Game show. Uh, I guess this is going to be episode one, and I'm not 100 percent sure what to call it, I, other than end game discussions, because I wanted to like involve everyone like in the group, but that's kind of a lame name, and so really I'm a little bit dissatisfied. <laughs> well, what do you got? Some work. I, I'm going to you know, you start Give so me five ideas now. Wait, hold on, time out. I have a question, if I may. All right, all right. So Strange so alien man. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a little confused. Are we here for a concert? Are we here for a uh, question and answer discussion? What are we here There's for? There's no I'm concert. Little... It's going to be a discussion. And what we're talking oh. about today is socializing in VR and where we think it's going to go in the future. Oh, um, okay. So, I mean, I'll start with sort of my experience. Like, I've been in VR chat for like maybe two months and I joined because of Gunter's <laughs> Universe. Has anybody else gone to like that show? Oh, yeah. I think that's the one show I'm sort of familiar with that's like consistently been going for a while. And then I checked in with some stuff on Altspace and it was like, whatever, not, I haven't fallen in love with anything. Um, but my experiences like in VR chat and in Altspace have sort of been the best part of virtual reality so far. Right? Yes. Like I've played a ton of games. Yeah. I've tried like so much of the Better shit that came 12. out on Steam. And yeah. still I keep coming back to this, even though. Correct. Yeah, I don't know. It's not like a direct. There's no explosions here. There's like no it's interesting. It's yeah. I kind of feel, like, kind of feel like I'm giving like I'm blowing off all space being in here like I'm a traitor, <laughs> but it's way uh, better in here because that's what I started with was alt space for like nine months, and I got my that hands because of alt space, and I've never been in here, and now it's like this is I don't know why this isn't more popular. This is, than, like a than this than is you your first time here, and I hate you all. This is well, this is my second or third day in here. Yeah, because you already have like a cool custom avatar and everything. Oh, I had somebody do that for me. I can't do this shit. It's too hard. <laughs> it's not that hard. It's hard okay. for normal people, cats, okay? I will say this. Normal. I will say this. All right, if You're I normal. may. Oh my a buddy God. of mine here, uh, Drunk Pirate, anymore. all right, he got me involved in the whole VR experience. Uh, Nom, uh, Nam, Namon. Let's go with Namono. Namono, all right. I have the yes, same amount of, uh, as far as experience in VR, same as you, about two months. Well, I don't know, Dave, what, a month? Month and yeah, a half? About a month. It's been a month. Okay, it's been a month. about a month. All right. I will say this. I've always been a gamer all my life. As soon as I got into this whole virtual reality thing, it kind of blew my mind um, as far as how this operates. Being able to, like, join new maps and explore new territory, that's always fun to do. And I'm happy that the smarter, knowledgeable people can spend time making that those places for us. So that's always a plus. Yeah, I definitely appreciate it. Um, wait, Kat, you can't... Can you see Nocturne? Try. No, he's got me blocked. He doesn't like my voice. Uh, oh. But can everyone else see him? <laughs> Just tell me like um, it is. Just tell me like it is. Oh, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Nocturne, uh, how long have you been in VR, and, like, how have you sort of changed your social life, like, as you've been, like, you know, progressing. Okay, for me, it's a little bit of a strange one because I mean, the first time, the first time I ever tried VR was actually in the early nineties. Yeah, um, and it was at a very, very famous uh, illegal rave, free party, free festival type thing called Castle Morton, which was which is legendary. That party was so big, the government in the UK actually changed the law. Uh, oh, it's like a constant and an entire place. lifestyle yeah, <laughs> to remove that from the equation so um, it was an interesting weekend and at the end of it uh, with a, a head full of acid and ecstasy we piled into a car and went to London and we went to the Trocadero Centre in London where they were just demoing uh, the very first sort of like 
arcade style um, VR headset. I can't see anybody okay. now. Everybody blocked um, me. And we tried it out. Um, tripping our tits off, we tried it out. I know Just I did. before Robert Anton Wilson lecture, which was amazing as well. well but um, I can't so see the first host. time I tried it, and I tried it as what much as I right? could after that. Because it fascinated again. Because the right, one thing that was immediately right obvious diving into VR even then when, when the tracking was appalling and it was just lines and stuff even then it was very obvious that you're dealing with an altered state of consciousness you know the first time the first time I tried this yeah this, this Oculus instantly it was familiar because it felt like an altered state of consciousness the, the movement when you're in virtual reality is the same as it feels when you're travelling through through the world between your ears in altered states um, and that fascinated me man that fascinated me and I've heard a lot I'm of not, people yeah, talk about like yeah. that comparison it's between visceral. like yeah, it's a with, like going experience. on like a mushroom trip, sort of comparing that to going into virtual reality, and there's like mm-hmm. a lot of these similarities where you're sort of realizing what existence is and like what reality is. I think your sense of reality changes the more time you spend in virtual reality. Absolutely, but the more time you spend in any altered state of consciousness, it gives you different angles and perspectives. I mean, if you think of if you think of a cube, right? Now, if you hold a cube straight head on like that, all you're going to see is a square, okay? That's all you're going to see is just a square, right? Now, if you rotate that cube and you look at it from a different angle, you know, you know what the square looks like, but then suddenly you can see these other facets. You can, you can get more of an idea of what the hole is, do you know what I mean? You're so, saying I was living in a flat land, and now I have a third dimension. Now you've gained an extra dimension, mate. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. I see where Nocturne... So, Nocturne, you're kind of relating... Uh, well, yeah, okay, so, like, basically this reality is just another uh, form of uh, consciousness, if you what will. I'm saying is, what I'm saying is your normal everyday reality is as much of an illusion as this reality, yeah? Ah, and okay, this reality, yes. this reality is yes. slightly more contrived and constructed because you're dealing with human beings sitting down, programming, right. making, and building. Yes, yeah. Did one of okay. you guys open the, the door for up here? Because is... nobody can come in here now. Oh Let me go. Uh, oh, that's interesting. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Nectarine, I think I was friends with you on Lil Troy. I'm Lil Troy. Hey, yeah, we hey, we hey, talked hey, about hey. this on Stonehenge, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, we did. We yeah, did. yeah did. I was that guy. Big. Yeah. Honestly, mate, you might as well sit down. It's going to be exactly the same conversation all over again. Amen. Amen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> yes, yes. I see what you mean, though. It's definitely uh, related. Yeah, the thing that's consistent, we... the thing that's consistent is you. Okay, you know your consciousness is wanders around uh-huh. in your little fleshy meat body, still, and your consciousness wanders around in here. You know, right? Now both of yeah. those things are equally illusory. Do you know what I mean? But one's mm-hmm. slightly important, more important to your physical well-being. Yeah. yeah. Uh, All right. So I want to take the temperature of the room. Then I guess, like, get your emojis ready if you have them. I kind of want like a thumbs up if you think this has improved your social life. Or a thumbs down if this you, you fear that this is going to be detrimental and you're one of those people where your life will be ruined because you're going to, you know, you can't escape. <laughs> so I only saw one thumbs down. Mixed coming from the audience. Well, so the yeah, we got thumbs down. You can't really describe it in an emoji. Send, send the neutral sign. <laughs> Go ahead. If I, yeah, if I may add to something of really that nature. Um... I almost want to add like, kind of like what you were saying, like a neutral thing, because it's at the same time, it's kind of frustrating because in the social life, I get frustrated with people because of how difficult they make it to how easy it should be. After experiencing this, I feel like the social part of things should be a little bit easier. Tell me why I feel like with other people in real life, it's made it harder for me because of how difficult they make it. If that makes so, any uh, sort of sense. Let me see I if I'm following you. Like, I have problems. social anxiety in real life, right? Or like okay. a little bit. I think everyone does. And then you come into virtual reality and you kind of find things a little bit easier. And Correct. then you're saying it, it comes, it becomes harder to go back. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. Like I'm looking at them, talking to them, and they're looking away. It's like, dude, why are you doing that? I'm talking to you. I think it's, I think it's a double-edged sword. I think that the whole social dynamic yeah. in VR, it's a double-edged sword. Because on the one on the one hand, it's, it's a great leveler, okay? Because when I'm looking out at you lot, I'm seeing your avatars, yeah? And whilst your avatars might be an expression of uh, of your individual, whatever, you know, um, you're, you're kind of bypassing. Yeah, you're bypassing all the preconceptions which come with, with which come with meeting a real human being mm-hmm. in the flesh, you know. Plus, 
you know, they, they, you know, they can't see the fact that it's 3 a.m. You sat, you sat wearing nothing but a t-shirt, like you know, on the yeah. end of the bed, off your tits. Do you know what I mean? You, you could be anyone. Yeah. You could be anything. You could be doing. You, you know, it's a leveler. You can, you can have disabilities. You, you can get have, to hide um, behind the mask. Kind of and you get to hide uh, behind the mask. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But so you still gotta level, have a little bit of personality great. in here to get a, get along. Absolutely. You don't know anybody. Do, yeah, but you can't but really get by in here. That's the yeah. thing. I totally agree. There are people in here that don't even talk, though. There, True. Yeah. there are a lot of people yeah. that like, yeah. want to get along, but the anxiety of reality keeps them from doing yeah. it. And then when you get to put the mask on, that kind of dissipates it. And then everybody well, gets is, to yeah. be friendly. This is one of the things about VR that's kind of um, uh, a bit of a strange thing. Is we've all kind of, we're all people who've been here for a while now, so we take it for granted. But the very first time people go into VR, um, it's not a natural experience. You, you feel right. very disconnected and, and a, the realities feel a bit janky. It's slightly uncomfortable, yeah. slightly awkward, and it takes a little while to wear that skin well. You know, it takes yeah. a little while to acclimatize. It takes a little while to get over motion. It takes a little while for yeah. your brain and your eyeballs to acclimatize and for you to get used to the sensation of taking VR off. People feel immediately a little bit weird by the experience. And some people don't go back, you know, and those that do, Stay. <laughs> yeah, I and agree. Well, but it's so, it's true, yeah. so true. Yeah, I think there's also yeah. I definitely agree. If I think there's also an issue drugs, um, or a matter about <laughs> the pseudo anonymity. Because you, you have like a username, but people don't really know who you are, who you really are. And well, that's part of the like map, right? The map isn't just a general. visual thing. It's a, it's a conceptual thing it's it's the way you look it's the name that you wear and and it's something that you choose which is not something we get in real life we don't get to choose how we look we don't get yeah. we get to choose so much more in our presentation because our options are so much more limited well, I think the fascinating thing is I mean because at the end of the day you're still dealing with real human beings we might be dealing with with like a virtual stage virtual microphone uh, virtual thigh high stockings whatever <laughs> we're still dealing, we're still dealing right, with real human beings yeah? and the bizarre thing about most sort of internet social mediums, yeah, whether it be Tiny Chat, whether it be Facebook, well, actually not Facebook, but things like Tiny Chat and places like that, yeah, I didn't think places was like this, places place like Altspace, where, where you have these communities of people who are spending more time with each other online than they are in the real world, more time in virtual reality than they are now, in actual reality. Now, is that dangerous? Is that and, dangerous, well, do you so think? Much, it's not so much that. It can be. It's, it's whatever you make it, mate. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. for, some people it can you, be, for some people, I mean, it can be a drug. For some people, it can be an addiction. Can you come up with a scenario where it would be? You know? uh, well, I, it, I think you mean it could be dangerous the way that a lot of tools thing. can be if they get abused, right? When television yeah. first came... Or like, oh my God, people are going to lose their entire life because they're going to sit in front of a TV. Yep. And oh. to some degree, it sort of happened, but most of us yep. made it out okay. <laughs> yeah. And I think that most of That's us are going to make it out of this okay, too. It'll, it'll become some okay. component of our lives. But I think most of us will keep one leg in real reality. And this is just okay, like... Okay, gotcha. I, I drink more. I drink more because I don't drink by myself anymore. So I can do it here and I don't feel guilty about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm with him, but I'm I'm Jay. Jay. That's why Jay's I'm my boy. I'm going to your chat and I have a drink with you guys. Yeah, so, that's yeah. Funny. That's, yeah, that's that has happened a few times. Is that why the great talk? <laughs> Is that why the Great Pug is sort of a popular hangout? Just because it's a, a familiar <laughs> bar that. atmosphere? Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah. No. I think it's it bridges still the gap between reality and VR. By I, know. Being, you know, I know you guys are familiar. Music. Uh, focusing area. On, I know you guys are focusing on the negative uh, issues related to the VR chat and and mm. real life, but here, here what I, what is expressed. From me is uh, it opens up a lot more of uh, beauty, which is also that's expressed amazing. in real life. It goes, you know, you just yeah. totally oh, open up yeah. here, and that's totally expressed in real life. So I think it's okay. a nice compliment I mean, to life. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Feel good feeling yeah. from here yeah, into real life. Yeah. Is what you're saying. Exactly. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, it's, it's yeah. like this. It's like this, guys. The more colors you have to paint in reality, you know, the more interesting and yeah. colorful it's going to be. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know? exactly. exactly. Let's provide you with a whole bunch of bunch of new paints to paint on, back to reality. On top you know, of that, yeah, what so. do you think of uh, VR and this as a legitimate um, form of art? <laughs> Because to me, it does. It comes off well, as interactive it, it, art. It, it's, it's people are creating things in here, and um, and yeah, it's a new medium now. We're, 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 we're at the point where, like, um, 
Man has first dug his hand into a pile of pigment and stuck it on a wall. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We are, yeah. We are, you know, that, uh, you know, Michelangelo and Da Vinci is, is where we are to where we're going to be. You know, this oh is the God. point where someone's yeah. taken a, this is the point where someone's taken a stick and shoved it into a clay tablet to count how many sheep they own. <laughs> so they want to swap the bags of brain. The is, there's you know, nothing in here that isn't the work from, of art. Like, everything in here is art. Every single piece of everything is exactly. an artistic creation. Exactly. Like, we are existing inside an artistic reality. It's a yeah, that's true. Medium. It's a creative yeah. medium. And the only, the only limitation is your own imagination, yeah? Yeah. This is more yeah. like when the, um, when the monolith uh, came uh, to the uh, apes. Ran out of me. <laughs> sure, sure. It does feel that way. And, and in a way, like, if you read that story to its conclusion, I think it happened in 3001 or maybe even later. Eventually, it leads us into a beam of light, and we're all going to go off into the singularity together. So, like, this is first step yeah, yeah. in that oh, final wow. journey. Um, so, wait, everyone who's, like, done their custom avatars, I'm kind of curious, like, you've designed it. Do, do you feel more, like, you're representing yourself more here than in real reality? Absolutely I not. honestly, I honestly <laughs> think like, no. it's not an alien. I'm not an alien. So, so on the on the inside, though, Maxwell, on the inside, <laughs> pretty much on the inside, in your heart, man. I was able to create that. Uh, it looks pretty good. This is what your soul looks like. Is what we're suggesting here. Your soul looks like this. Well, that should well, make I you feel special. An I, I bought feel like there's mine. I can read this guy's mind right here. Oh, he wants to know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like I'm more part of the group when I have a custom avatar. To be honest, like with you guys, because we've been hanging okay, out for yeah. so long. I feel like yeah. it's, it's definitely part of it. Yeah. It feels yeah. Like I I definitely feel like my avatar is kind of a character that I step into. Not like a character in terms of personality, but like I. I change my habits when I'm in VR, and, and I think part of it has to do with knowing, like, the way I look. I don't, I, I look how I, again, I look how I choose to look here in VR yeah. rather than I, how I look in reality. So it, yeah. I, have a, I have a legitimate question. Uh, okay. When you're back in real reality, do you yeah. miss your other arms? <laughs> I can't use them yet, no, but using, being able to have them move around, that's, that's in the plan, so we we'll probably you will. in the kitchen just thinking, where the fuck are my other arms? I have my arm in reality, and I'll oh, no. Yeah, oh, totally. Uh, How many of you guys do dream about VR? That's an experience yeah. I've had. You yeah. guys dream about yeah. VR. Yeah. I hear all your sense. voices when I sleep. Yeah. I've had a dream ever since. Yeah. I'm trying to adjust my VR headset, because it wouldn't work right. So, like, the the of VR are going to translate into your real dreams. Oh, if, I, if I may say, if I may say, I am somewhat. I've I've kind of dipped my toes, if you will, in the whole meditation experience and whatnot. Blah blah blah. And I've tried to train my brain on being able to lucid dream almost every oh, night, nice. almost every night. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And it's really fun. It's re oh. yeah, can it's I really fun. About that? Yeah, that's fine. I've if you been want. trying for years to lucid dream, and I can't get a working technique. So if I can, it's hard. It, it is. It's very hard, and it's very frustrating. But once I you mean, get it, and once you start it going, it's really fun. All right. I but anywho, to. no, how actually, far? the only wow. thing that's worked for me to actually get me to lucid dream is not a reality check, but while I'm in reality, pretend that I'm dreaming, and then I found myself actually doing that in dreaming and becoming lucid. But I only lucid dream like once every three months. Um, well, but for I, now, you've I, got. For now, you've got VR chat, which is the next best thing. I was going to say, yeah. It's like the end goal. To, like, dream while you're awake. Yeah. I mean, that's where we're heading, right? Like, that's where this is all going. This is... Yeah. I think so. I mean... So, wait. I'm going to zoom out for a little bit. Let's, like, take the scale out. We're talking about sort of the moment, the way we're all going through this right now. later. So, last summer, Stranger Things came out, and... Oh, yeah. If you haven't seen it, Stranger Things on Netflix, it may be extremely nostalgic for the 80s. Yes. Because sure. you're, you're watching it, there's no cell phones, there's no computers. And oh. that friend group was so tight. And I was like, so I was like, oh my God, I remember having friends and like being really close. <laughs> <laughs> and Aww. now it's like completely dream. different. Like I like the, the kids today, these fucking kids today, they don't have that anymore, right? And yeah. so the other thing I saw on Netflix was Sense8, and Sense8 I loved. And Sense8 oh, is about people's show. minds connecting over the world. I also saw an anime called this Your Name, <laughs> which is about like people making these connections. And I, I love that. That doesn't scare me. So I'm looking forward to this future where we're all going to be connected 
But I yeah. miss sincerely that the when I was growing up, we were completely disconnected, right? Like we're on this pathway where things are going to change significantly. So I, I kind of want to hear what your expectations are. Like, are you afraid of the next 10, 20 years or is it all pretty positive yeah. in your mind? I, I think I'm it's going to fight about I'm afraid about now because because uh, just look at the White House and who you've got in the White House. I mean, that's genuinely terrifying. But uh, are you worried about us losing privacy? You think that's a real thing? I feel like it's gone, mate. I don't know where you've been. 1994 was like, yeah, is kind of already gone. 1994 was a very long time ago. You're talking about nostalgia for Stranger Things. That happened after 1984. You know, 1984 for real just kind of happened in the background and nobody cares because they're all plumbed in at Facebook 24 7. You know, the whole privacy thing, it's it's gone. You know, all of your all of your privacy gone. All of those basic rights gone. Do you know what I mean? We've we've been sold out to big corporations and big banks. Now the trick is because we're talking about virtual reality and bringing it back into here. How do we preserve Um, virtual reality from being a big corporate monstrosity? You know, from having from having Coca Cola pumping their bullshit into your brain Mm -hmm. via virtual media. We've got to support things like open source and things like that, right? I mean, because that's the that's uh, one of the one of the ways we have to to combat you know privatization and commercialization and everything is making it open to everyone. Yeah. I mean, we're, yeah. we're basically, like, we're, if you have an open plan. protocol for creating yeah. VR worlds, I think right. honestly, nobody can control you know, specific yeah, VR worlds. How you were, how you were mentioning in the 80s, like that Stranger Things, very tight group of friends. I honestly think that's going to loop back around. I think eventually, when VR gets to the point where it's like everybody's in there, you're going to still, you're going to, it's going to happen again. You're gonna have, yeah, I mean, look at you guys. Yeah, it's you guys, happening right now. I mean, with, you guys hang out with each other. Yeah, we're all a bunch yeah. of cool friends but yeah. i think the group yeah. will get even tighter and the thing is it's like and you can hang out with four people and go to anywhere on the internet together i mean right now it's still kind of segmented in my opinion but like in this i mean shoot everybody gets along we're all friends i mean but it's happening again except instead of like you know my buddy across the street it'll be my buddy in south korea it's true if you continue yeah. if you continue that thought to augmented reality you're gonna have um, be able to hang out like like in the 80s with people, but in like in a mixed reality situation where someone in another country is like sharing um, like your um, physical space. Absolutely, I don't not think that's sunset for sure. Not, that's exactly what sunset is like. <laughs> uh, the portation thing, the hollow portation thing. If you look at hollow portation on, on YouTube, you'll see you'll see videos of exactly that. People have got cameras set up in their living rooms and they're holographically projecting themselves to somebody else and sharing oh, two wow. people sharing the same space as holograms um yeah and that's crazy crazy stuff because you can stop and rewind them afterwards you can play back the entire thing as a three-dimensional experience you've just had in your own living room you know you can take you can take your own interactions you can take this conversation we're having right now, rewind it three minutes, shrink it down to this size, and sit and watch yourself. You know? um, yeah, that's yeah, happened already. That's true. Technology's there already. It's happening, and it's just around the corner, or something along those lines. You know, yeah. all this stuff is happening. The augmented, mixed reality, whatever you want to call it, and virtual reality. You know, this is all happening. We're the first pioneers to explore these new countries. I'm not sure. You know? We are the one. And what it will be is entirely down to what you guys make it. <laughs> yeah. It's it feels be, to me like what you guys make it. It feels like we're coming over a hump where. Uh, I remember on Facebook or when MySpace was starting, like people would have so many friends, right? You'd have hundreds of friends. Some people had thousands of friends, but who knows if they really knew any of those people. Oh, God. And then I think they were coming back down because I, I don't know if it's going to change completely, but in VR chat, I don't think you know thousands of people. You just know like the close knit group of people that all, you know, you always are hanging around. And so like it's sort of going back on itself, I, I think to a place where we're more comfortable as human beings, like we're not meant to know a thousand people. We're meant to know like yeah. 150 people or like live in a tribe of like 70. I think on the Facebook, it was like a point system. You're, they weren't necessarily oh. friends. They were points. The more yeah. points you have, the more cooler you were. As where now it's part like of... you physically, you, well, not physically, but you know, know, know some, people, some, people, some people are just socially promiscuous, let's face it. <laughs> <laughs> part of the problem with, with Facebook is that you could not like, keep track of anyone unless you friended them. 
and so it's like a, a nomenclature problem. <laughs> like it's just someone you're following. It's not your friend. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I'd love the fact that he's like superficial too. Hey, I think I think in here we find Ooh. there's more of a personal contact with people. I find from my experience as towards Facebook, it was more, uh, oh yeah, that person, that person. You learn about their life story, but here we have a little bit more closer interaction. It feels like because we're playing or we're playing games together, okay. it's more interactive in here than let's say Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Where you're Maybe just hearing you, about people's lives. That yeah. little bit tricks our little monkey brain yeah. since we're actually yeah. physically interacting that we feel more personal towards each other. You're saving the memories differently, right? I think when yeah. you're talking to someone and it seems face to face, you're just processing that differently yeah. than if you were to read it on Facebook. Hey. And like, it's much hey. more natural. <laughs> so, I, let's the, head towards the end the with friend? a positive idea. Yeah. Wait, who's this guy? It's Cloud. Uh, I mean, that's Cloud. So I want to end in a positive way. So, uh, who here has heard of Rat Park? Do you guys know that concept? No, I don't know. So, okay, Rat Park was this experiment uh, where, so like in the 60s, they're experimenting with rats and they keep them in these little, uh, what were they called? They were called. Skinner box. It's a Skinner box. Ending? It's like. No, 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 like uh, what were you gonna say? How's it ending on a positive note? Oh no no, we're doing there. So we used to keep the rats in the little Skinner box. And scientists, not only And these rats, these rats are miserable. And then they test drugs on them. They'll give them like a little drip of uh, morphine or heroin or whatever. And they'd be like, well look, these rats just like they love the morphine. They love heroin. They just can't stop themselves. They're addicted. These substances are awful. And then later in the late 70s uh, this guy named uh, let's see I have his name here Bruce K. Alexander at Simon Fraser University in Canada did this rat park experiment where instead of keeping the rats in solitary confinement they made a big old cage and they put a bunch of rats in there of different sexes they all had friends they had little things to play with places to exercise they made a rat Disneyland is what they did they made a rat Disneyland fucking rats the world has ever known and then they gave those rats the same option. They could have heroin or morphine, or they could just have plain water. And it changed. Instead of being completely addicted to the drug, they would start drinking the water because they're not miserable anymore. They have friends, and that changed like their whole personality. And so we're living in a place where, like, I we are. Some of us are somewhat isolated. Like, if you don't live in a big city, like, you might feel like. Uh, you now have this thing called virtual reality, which I think, like VR right chat, in a way, way, functions as a, a rat park, sort of. Where okay. if you have like, if you're socially isolated, like if you're in, I don't know, I'm gonna give an extreme example, like you're on the Mars mission. No, that wouldn't work. It's still never. Or even, the like, Mars in Colorado, internet. like the outskirts, like way out there, yeah, the fuck is this or something, yeah. and there's not and, much population. And you're left there and you're going mad. You get to sign into VR chat and you actually get your brain, your monkey brain, yeah. right now gets fulfilled. Like you get your social interaction out of the way. Humans are super social creatures and this is filling in a gap that's kind of been missing with uh, modern technology. Yeah. yeah. I think that will lead to uh, a change in politics because always through history, civilization is limited by geography. And with the yeah. internet, um, the, the destruction of those boundaries have begun. But this, the internet has always been well, on a 2D screen, always like sort of well, you know what impersonal. They say. And it's yeah. all starting to become more real. Uh, is, is it safe to take it that far? Do you think? I don't know. I think it's going to progress unless it will progress. we're all dead. Don't get me wrong. Unless some catastrophe happens, we it's going to keep progressing until. I don't know. We're all but naturally, you know, a little, uh, little, little slow about it, but then, then think, think about it. They probably did the same thing for Leo books, <laughs> for <laughs> art, pictures, make for make movies, anything. Mm. I was going to say, I was just literally, as you were saying that, I was just thinking, like, you know, somewhere in <coughs> ancient in Babylon, <coughs> 6,000 years ago, there were a bunch of guys sat around just like this in a tavern having a conversation about books. Oh. How, how, much little, how much little changes, if you think about it. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. But it's much yeah. scarier now because of just how fast it's moving. Like, they would probably have the same conversation decades apart, but a decade yeah. from now, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to be having a new conversation. Oh, yeah. next Tuesday. Next yeah. Tuesday. They're making a couple of hours actually. I think things are going to take a turn. <laughs>
Um, all right. So unless anyone else has like some closing comments, I think we're gonna, sh- you know, r- run this thing down. Everybody no, that cool? Was a fun conversation. Oops. Yeah, I all think right. so. I think we've covered quite a few different things, but I think we all, I don't know, we've all shared our opinions, and I think uh, we're all kind of on the right track as to how far this may lead in five to ten years from now. Yeah, this is kind of interesting to see where it's going to take us. Yeah. So I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to try and do <coughs> this on a weekly basis. Oh. So round of applause for impromptu guys. I think round of applause. Thank you, Troy. Right. Give, give it up. Give it up for Troy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Troy, Troy, my boy. Good. Okay. And, and all of you, of course, I'm hoping to do this weekly, and I'm looking for advice on how to make sort of the discussion work the best, right? Because I'm not interested in running a show where it's just me talking. I kind of need to hear from yeah. uh, people who Questions are experiencing it, this happen right now. Yeah. yeah man. Uh, <laughs> all right, so thanks for coming. I hope we all see some of you again next week. Uh, goodbye. Wait, wait a minute. I feel annoyed. She's the camera.